It's the most powerful form of Devin. <laughs> All right. Let's get this one started. We got the other side of losers' uh, quarterfinals coming in. All right. Zane, Sinji, battle of patience, battle of buttons. Lots of stuff is going to be on the screen. Pick your favorites now, folks. Yeah, there, is, there are going to be a lot of things. Both these characters have three projectiles. There's oh, a I mean, lot of technically. There is a lot of stuff. Uh, chat, please save your questions for after class. <laughs> For now, enjoy the heavy zoning beauty that is both of these characters on. It's we Sadist no decided that it was Final Destination where we were going to start the set. All right. Nowhere so, safe to run. Nowhere safe to hide. So the thing is, we talk about how these characters are zoners, but at the same time, both of them have pretty solid boxing tools. Pac-Man especially with that forward air, with that neutral air. And we definitely seen, even though might not have the best buttons, Zane is able to, you know, kick it up close. He's not afraid to. So... I mean, you know, we talk about how oh, this is zoner about, but we're a minute in, and already Sinji looking like he's on his last legs, 112% trapped at the ledge, but manages to get off it beautifully. Will he be able to convert himself? No, Zane able to make it back to neutral. Yeah, now finding those marks where you just use your close range tools to try and even the playing field, get yourself safe landing, is very important for this matchup ahead. Controlling the ledge is going to be extremely difficult from both of these characters, in spite of the fact that that's where they typically thrive. Here, they just have to use their tools as reactionary as they can, and bell in hand to a smash attack is about as reactionary as you get for Pac-Man. And you know, I do think it's worth noting, Sinji so far has been making really good mileage of just being in Zane's face. Not even necessarily pushing buttons, but sometimes just shielding. Twice now I've seen him just oh, shield a can at point blank, point blank range, and Zane is the one who ends up taking the hit for it. Speaking that was of, amazing that, trick shot that control. Was, that may have been the most dynamic I've seen Zane forced to control the can because that was bounced several times off of Pac-Man's side B. Not much you can do with that one, but regardless, it brings us back to an even game state. I would say, if not for the fact that Galaga in the hand, it's Sinji waiting in the wings to land his hit. Oh, again, these early percents for Sinji can rack up damage really, really quickly. Baiting out the dash attack. Really smart from Zane. That dash attack from Pac-Man. Normally a really hard move to punish. But he's able to just space around and instead punish Sinji's next action. And now as we are looking at this match, that's dead even once again. And we're into that zoner, <laughs> zoner v zoner style. They're not trying to mess around in each other's face this time. And oh, it's working out for Zane. Big damage already with those cans. Oh, I like the choice of forward air to break the fire hydrant. It puts a particular control in space where Zane doesn't reliably have a tool to cover that that aggressively. Because of that, the push to the ledge, even though we see Sinji return himself to stage, that's still a good amount of damage. And this answer with side B into the bonus fruit, the specific orange that's being used by Sinji. That way it could burst through all of these tools that Zane is putting in front of themselves. All right, so Sinji now, he knows he needs the bell. He knows he needs one of those moves that can just, kill, you know, one of the fruit that can kill. And that means he's going to be slowing down the pace of the game. Oh, but slowing down the pace means putting himself on ledge. And Zane is ready for that. Look at this. He doesn't, but the Sinji's been getting off the ledge so easily lately. You know, both of these characters typically control ledge really, really well. But because they have so much ability to mix up what they're doing, as well as covering their own options, much easier said than done. Sinji mm. re-grabbing the bell. This could be massive. Having bell in hand means that holding shield is so much more threatening, and that's what we're seeing Sinji do. Just chucking it at him? Ah, still not able to find its mark. All of these other hits that the bell can connect on, kind of messing with Sinji's ability to actually land it. Yeah, ooh, and I can actually just take out this mark right there. I think the fact that Zane is making use of the Wild Gummin to just act as a shield in front of themselves and protect it from the bonus fruit is probably one of the better defensive calls for this matchup because look at all the stuff that can happen instantly. But who's taking the brunt of that action? It's the Gunman, not Zane. But here's something worth noting about the Gunman. Hilarious, by the way. I don't know what exactly went down there. But um, Sinji is throwing his fruit at the Gunman. It blows up the Gunman, but then he recatches it. This is something that Sinji honestly loves playing against characters that let him recatch his fruit basically for free like that. 
very well-spaced bout here. Forward airs for forward air is just not finding their marks, but Zane able to find a couple of aerials here, try to control the situation more and more. And because of the percentage deficit at hand, going for these can trades is working out really well for them. Late hit in there, not leading into much, but it is going to give Zane more control. Oh, Ooh, yo, we grabbed the bell? All right, Sinji now starting to look a little better. I was going to say that Zane. <gasps> oh, Sinji's looking great. That was not true. He just tapped him with forward air and knew, just knew he wasn't going to air dodge. The, all of the string Damn. started. This was such a beautiful combo. Look at this. this he air dodged. I'm not sure what that air dodge was about. They I think tried he was to... trying to catch the fruit. Yes, exactly. But the fruit despawned. And that was the opening that let Sinji actually close out the stock. I don't think we're going to get it in time to look at it. But yeah, the fact that that shield bounced off, they he did not go in the proper direction in order to grab that strawberry. Because of that, they died out at the ledge. Running it back to FD makes all the sense in the world. I feel like Zane was managing to play out the stage a little bit better, but just really solid reserve from Sinji managed to bring him forward. And uh, when you talk, when, when this is a zoner matchup, you know, and a lot of the times they're kind of, you know, really grinding it out. If one player has a crazy stock, like we saw Sinji just have, of course that's going to be a difference maker. And if you're a Zane, you could maybe try and aim for some of those yourself. Zane, they're still very much able to take care of this, especially when you see how consistent they are with taking that stage control. And they can't find the stock just yet, but the damage sits so heavily for themselves as they begin game two. Oh man, he catches it just so that he can move oh. off the Galaxian. Is that gonna be it? No, Almost that is. was that was a lot of rage and that was a really ah. wonky hit. <laughs> Yo, this said bounce back. This yeah, said, get out of here. Don't forget that um when Pac-Man does have his uh trampoline underneath him, down airs not as good as they usually are. Yo, the parry to grabbing of the bonus fruit and just keeping it in their mouth right now. That's one less tool that's at Sinji's disposal and a tool consistently <gasps> shown to give Sinji so much control and reversibility. Tried to throw the Yo, they the try to get himself. so cheeky with it. I mean, I, I feel like Sinji would never fall for that. I, hey, I Sinji's say. human. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, trying to get really cheeky with this, with these items, like, you know, going for those Z-drops, that sort of thing. But Sinji is just not falling for any of it. And now, you know, definitely Sinji um, on death's door here, but already dialed 117 damage to Zayn. If he dies here, it's not unmanageable for him to just, you know, respawn and make a comeback or just win the next stock outright all on his own. Yeah, there they go. It's the can that does it for them as they manage to find their way eventually. One thing that Zane does need to adapt, though, is to how well Sinji is reacting to bonus fruit bouncing off of the gunman. You brought this up earlier in game one, and they're consistently doing that to refresh their resources. Typically, that's what we'll see Sinji do. Go off stage, wait a bit of time, reset which fruit he wants to have in his hand. But because Zane is putting their gunman out, Sinji just has a free wall, so to speak. Oh, Sinji being so tricky off the ledge, but th this is something where Sinji is, you know, seeing, oh, an unsafe move. Oh, you know, I'm getting that neutral or the forward air, but hasn't really been able to punish as effectively or especially nearly as effectively as he was in game one. And oh, it's just because there's stuff in the way, dude. Like, you try playing the game normally when you have so much litter about. I thought we turned items off, dude. And they turned them back on. There you have it. All right, just basic damage. That's honestly relying on the the close quarters buttons, those simple, probably the safest way that Sinji can find damage in these higher situations. Yeah, now it's there are a couple of fruit here that normally you don't see Sinji use, but this time around, because of the specific matchup, things like the cherry, the orange, I mean, we almost never see him go for apple, which, especially at these higher percents, that is a really viable tool for getting the kill. <gasps> oh, he fell out of there, forward smash Zane, shaking their head. Unfortunate. They're still very much in it to win it, though. And yes, I do want to talk about the bonus fruit for a moment. The cherry finds its utility by being one of the fastest options that Sinji has from afar. Uh, and it's very good in that manner because he doesn't have to overextend. The orange, though, specifically for its speed and the arc that it's coming. It's coming in straight onwards onto Zane, and they don't really have a proper tool in their kit for dealing with that. I'm surprised he's going for Galaxian right now. Okay, just wanted to re grab it. Key is available to him. Is he going to be chucking it anytime soon? He's Probably. being so careful. 
What happened? The shot from the gunman connects. Normally, yep. was he too close to the hydrant? Normally, that doesn't go through hydrant, correct? It's a transcendent projectile. It is a it transcendent will. projectile. So that's so smart from Zane throwing it out right there, and Sinji not being ready for it. That's going to be a lead for Zane, and Sinji's a oh, right. not a long lead though. They're not able to find any hits off that second stock, and because of it, brings us right on back to a dead even. However, they do sit with stage control in favor. <laughs> You know, these are normally these two players. It's the sort of thing where they get a stock lead and then they just convert it into so much advantage. But this time around, neither one of them is really getting, you know, huge utilization off of a lead like that. And There's it's because they both recognize the value in their fairly similar play style. While it's executed extremely differently by virtue of their characters, they know that if they're just a little bit too patient, they're all of a sudden giving too much space. If they're a little too aggressive, they overextend in a way where they have no way out. So they just need to keep a very consistent game plan and adapt along the way. Staying very fluid is how they're able to stay alive. Oh. Look at the way that Sinji is grabbing and re-grabbing these fruit, able to keep on this pressure with the projectiles from so far away. But the question is now, we are looking at a Zane that is at death percent. He's going to be looking for the bell, that sort of option. <gasps> Just throws the clay oh, right in his face. Oh, that is very dangerous. They're forced to roll out of the way to not get shield poked. No, the, the Hydra is blocking the gun with the Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Look at this. These two now are so close. 124% and Zane is at the ledge, trapped there. No, he's not. Just gets off for free. Sinji trying to find a quick hit of some kind. The Trading with the... Be that's controlling where the trick shot goes right now is <gasps> so important. That angle just barely off. <gasps> they took the bell. This is huge. Oh, they need to hold on to this bell for dear life. But they let go. There's 45 seconds on the clock. We need to address the elephant in the room right here, which is Sinji can take all the time he feels oh, yes. he needs. Sin right now, Zane's in the hot seat. They need to be the one to press. But unfortunately, they're not able to do it. Sinji gets it done. He didn't There's use the apple once throughout all how many and minutes were they playing? Too. He wasn't using it. And I thought it was because it wasn't a good tool. Oh, no, no, it's sir. because he made sure his opponent completely forgot about it. It's this such a strange arc. It's a position where really Zane had felt super duper comfortable before. Throws out that, you know, the clay shot at that range, but Sinji just jumps up and throws it down diagonally, spiking him yep. right in the head. Yep. Just really solid play from Sinji, and honestly, it's it's that play that's why he's infamous. Oh yeah, just 